Hello viewers, welcome to this video. So this is the fourth video in the CubeSphere series. So just a quick recap. In the first video, we deployed a Kubernetes cluster using KubeKey tool. And then in the second video, we deployed a Kubernetes cluster and CubeSphere on top of it using a single command, again using KubeKey. And later we found that the Prometheus and the Alert Manager pod were not running because we didn't have sufficient resources. Although we followed the documentation, giving the virtual machine to CPU and 4 gig of RAM, still it's not sufficient to run all the parts that Qsphere requires. So in the follow-up video, which is video three, we did the same thing, but with the VM, we've given an increased system resources. We've given it four gig, sorry, four CPU and eight gig of RAM, and then everything went okay. And this video, we are going to be deploying Kubesphere on an existing Kubernetes cluster. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. So first let's spin up a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm gonna be using my Vagrant environment to deploy a Kubernetes cluster in Libvirt. All right, so for that, I'm going to git clone my Kubernetes repository. I'll put a link to my GitHub repository in the video description if you want to try along. All right, so I'm going to go into Kubernetes and then to the Vagrant provisioning. All right, I have the Vagrant file, my usual Vagrant scripts to bring up a bootstrap, a Kubernetes cluster with one master node and two worker nodes. So most of you who have been following my videos for quite a long time, you know about my Vagrant environment. So you could use either Libvirt or VirtualBox um, as your hypervisor. So I'll be using, my host machine is uh, a Dell XPS laptop, I'm running Arch Linux on it, so I'm going to be using KVM Libvirt as the Vagrant provider. So if I do Vagrant box list, so all my Kubernetes nodes will be running Ubuntu 22.04 and I'll be using the Libvirt provider. I've already downloaded the Vagrant boxes, so it's going to be quick for me. And if you're running this for the first time, it's going to take a little while to download the Vagrant boxes from the Vagrant cloud. Okay, so, but before running the Vagrant up command, I'm going to edit the Vagrant file. All right, I'm going to make some minor adjustments because from our previous experience, from video two, we know that uh, we need to give the virtual machine some increased resources, otherwise all the parts required for the QSphere won't be running. So by default, if you run Vagrant up on my Vagrant provisioning scripts directory, you will get one master node and two worker nodes. So you can see here, so there is one master node and then two worker nodes. So master node count is one and the worker node count is two. So I'm gonna stick with this, the same thing. So I'm gonna be having one master node and two worker nodes. You can see here the worker node gets one CPU and one gig of RAM. The master node gets two CPU and two gig of RAM. But I'm going to change this to four gigs. So the worker node is going to get four gig and also two CPU. Bear in mind my host machine, which is my laptop, has got eight cores, so I should be fine. And, I, and it has got like 16 gig of RAM. So I'm gonna be using six CPU out of the eight CPU I've got on my host machine. So one, two CPU for the master nodes and four CPUs for the worker nodes. And if you look at the memory, then two gig for the master node and then eight gig. So altogether it's 10 gig out of my 16 gig available on the host machine. So I should be fine. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to run Vagrant up minus pro minus minus provider libbert so it's gonna take a minute or two and i'm gonna pause the video and come back when it's done all right so vagrant up command completed and i'm going to make a directory dot cube under my home directory and i'm going to copy etc kubernetes admin dot conf to dot cube as dot config file sorry config file and the root password for all the nodes are cube admin all right, so that's copied. If I do kubectl cluster info, yep, we've got a Kubernetes cluster. kubectl get nodes, all the nodes are ready. kubectl get pods dash a. Yep, all the pods are running. So we have a working Kubernetes cluster that we can deploy kubesphere onto. Okay, so what's next? Let's go to the documentation of kubesphere documentation and for this video what i'm going to be following is this link here minimal cube sphere on kubernetes so this is installing cube sphere on an existing kubernetes cluster so there are some prerequisites you should be using one of these uh, kubernetes versions in order to deploy cube sphere unfortunately 
is not supported although 1.25 is the latest version of Kubernetes. I haven't actually tried running 1.25 installing QSphere on 1.24. I guess it should work but has not been tested I guess. All right so the other important thing is make sure your machine meets the minimum hardware requirements more than one CPU and more than two gig of RAM so that's fine and the important thing is to have a default storage class at the moment I don't have any persistent volume provisioning so CubeSphere requires persistent volumes for example for parts like Prometheus Alert Manager and few other things it requires persistent volumes to be created so in order to do that we need to have a volume provisioning and a storage class having a storage class is not sufficient you need to have a storage class that's marked as default so for persistent volume provisioning I'm going to be using something called open EBS open EBS Kubernetes storage simplified I'm going to go to the get started page and on the left user guides installation and there are a couple of ways you can install open EBS on your cluster so it just makes use of some available spaces in your existing Kubernetes nodes it can be a partition on your Kubernetes nodes like master node and the worker nodes if you have a if you have a spare partition or a spare disk attached to the Kubernetes nodes you can configure open EBS to use those partitions or disks for storage or you can use a simple plain host path as a directory to be used by open EBS for storage all right, so you can either use Helm to install open EBS or a plain simple kubectl command that applies a manifest. So I'm going to be going, I'm going to go with the kubectl apply command, which is simple. Um, although I have Helm installed, it's, it's a matter of adding a Helm repository and then installing the open EBS chart from the open EBS Helm repository. But to me, I think this one is quite simple. So I'm going to copy that and run it on my Kubernetes cluster. And you can see it has deployed a bunch of resources a namespace called open EBS service account cluster role role binding a couple of custom resource definitions config map daemon set deployment and everything uh, and also a couple of storage classes which is what we want all right so if I do kubectl get namespace we have this open EBS namespace open EBS get all so container is getting created let's give it a few more seconds for all the pods to be up and running so there are a bunch of deployments daemon sets a couple of services and all these things all right so all the pods are now running right if we take a look at storage class so we have two storage class provided by open EBS but none of them are default so I'm going to make I don't have extra device or partition on my Kubernetes cluster so I'm going to be using the host path provisioner which will just create a directory on each of your Kubernetes nodes to be used as the persistent volumes all right so I'm going to edit the storage class open EBS host path I'm going to make it the default storage class for this cluster so kubectl edit storage class open EBS host path so in order to make a storage class default you just need to add an annotation so the annotation is storage class dot kubernetes dot io slash is default class set that to true save it and now if I do kubectl get storage class you can see open EBS host path storage class is marked as default so having just the storage class is not sufficient when you deploy kubesphere it will fail a lot of parts will be in the pending state because it won't be able to uh, create persistent volume so you need to mark at least one storage class as default in your cluster in order to proceed so okay so we have a working kubernetes cluster with storage class with a default storage class and let's follow the documentation in the kubesphere minimal kubesphere so we have satisfied all the prerequisites and it's just going to be a couple of kubectl commands in order to install kubesphere so the first one is this one so that just uh, deploys a bunch of resources let's copy that paste it right so you can see here there's a new namespace kubesphere system created service account cluster role role binding a deployment ks installer so that ks installer part is the one that actually deploys kubesphere in your kubernetes cluster but at the moment it doesn't do much it's waiting for the cluster configuration you can see here there is a custom resource definition called cluster configuration the next kubectl apply command we are going to run is the actual one that creates the cluster configuration 
So how do you want to configure KubeSphere's? Everything is defined in the cluster configuration that we are going to deploy now. So once we deploy the cluster configuration, this KS installer pod will take that cluster configuration and deploy the KubeSphere into your Kubernetes cluster. So that's what we'll be doing next. So I'm going to copy this command. All right, you can see here it's the cluster configuration.yaml. It's just going to deploy one custom resource definition cluster configuration. And then we should be able to see the logs of this case installer part kicking off and then deploying KubeSphere. All right, so I'm going to be using K9S. I've done a video on K9S, which is easy to use uh, with your arrow keys and stuff, typing a long list of commands. So let's deploy this one. So that's going to deploy the custom resource definition cluster configuration. So that's deployed. So I'm going to go to the K9S and I'm going to go down to the QSphere system, the case installer pod, and look at the logs. So you can already see the, the pod is actually working and it looks like it's running some Ansible playbook to set up the QSphere cluster. It's going to take about five minutes, I guess, five to six minutes. So it's doing its job. Let's wait patiently. All right, so the case installer pod seems to have completed its job. So we can see the, the URL for the web UI and the credentials, admin credentials. So let's take a look. Copy the URL. All right, the username is admin. Password is this one. And we are required to change the password. Right, so we have a cluster. So back in the K9S, I'm going to look at the KubeSphere monitoring system namespace and all the pods are looking healthy. So the alert manager pod, Prometheus pod, Prometheus is a stateful set, so it has got two pods. You can see from the, the naming convention here, zero and one. All looks okay if I look at the stateful set. So Prometheus and Alert Managers of stateful sets, they are running with the required number of replicas. All looks okay to me. Let's close this and go back to the web UI. So if I click on the console here, I can already see the pretty graphs here for all my worker nodes. So which means our Prometheus bots are running fine without any issues. Nodes, so we have all the three nodes. So this two here shows this node KMaster has got two taints associated with it. So taint as master control plane, CPU usage, memory usage, pod percentage allocated CPU, everything looks okay to me. If I click on KMaster, you can see some nice graphs. Pods, the list of pods running on this particular node. All right, go back, monitoring and alerting, cluster status. Yeah, so KubeSphere, Sorry, I wanted to go for the system components to make sure all the components are running healthy. So KubeSphere, Kubernetes, monitoring, all running okay. All right, so I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. It's a quick one, so I just wanted to show you how you can install KubeSphere on your existing Kubernetes cluster. I'll see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.